The New York City medical examiner now confirming the gunman in the deadly shooting targeting the NFL headquarters did have CTE as he claimed. In writing, Shane Tamura blamed the league for, quote, concealing the dangers to players' brains and asked for his brain to be studied. You may remember four people were killed in that shooting back in July. The medical examiner says Tamura died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Pathologists did not say whether CTE played a role in the shooting. In a statement, the NFL says the science around this condition continues to evolve and the physical and mental manifestations of CTE remain understudied. Let's bring in ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Alok Patel for more on this. Dr. Patel, always great to have you, my friend. Uh, give us an overview of what CTE does to the brain and then also how this condition to, can lead to behavioral changes. Absolutely, Morgan, and I'm glad that we're taking this moment to raise awareness about CTE while acknowledging that this cannot be used as a form of blame and, and any act of violence, but we just need to talk a little bit more about it. So CTE, if you break down the term, chronic traumatic encephalopathy is referring to a progressive degenerative brain condition, chronic traumatic, repeated head blows, encephalopathy, an actual problem with the brain. Now, if I just distill down the science, you basically can have these buildup of abnormal proteins that can disrupt the brain's ability to repair itself, leading to inflammation, and this causes a cascade over time, especially affecting areas in the brain that may be involved with emotions, judgment, impulsivity, and memory, which we can see in some of the symptoms when people are diagnosed with CT after life and people look back on maybe changes they may have had. You talk about how this develops over time, and I want to lean in there because the medical examiner says the shooter uh, had low-stage CTE. He, he didn't play football professionally, but we know that he played in high school. Put that into perspective. What would the symptoms be at that stage, that low stage? It's hard to actually say based on reports about what stage have led to what symptoms, because the actual way to diagnose CTE is with an autopsy, with a highly specialized professional, these neuropathologists. Now, the hallmark of what they see in the brain after death in CETs is buildup of these abnormal proteins, and the extent of those proteins throughout the brain that they may see kind of determines what that grade is. Now, if we look back on the life of some famous cases of CTE, there are reports that people had mood changes, irritability, signs of dementia, and so forth. But again, it's hard to say that those symptoms in anyone might be CT or another progressive neurological condition, which is why it's important to tell people that if you have any mood swings at all, if you think you may have suffered from excessive concussions contributing to it, it's important to see a neurologist or a neuropsychiatrist to get that treatment. Absolutely. And, and we often hear about CTE in the context of football players in that sport. Who else is at risk and what should parents know about preventing head injuries, but then also concussion in youth sports? And, and I guess is football uh, the only concern that, that parents should be, should be worried about? What other sports are there? We have studies showing that CT has taken place not just in football players. In fact, it was first studied in boxers, hence the term punch drunk, which they used to use to describe these boxers who had these changes, these mental status changes after career in boxing. But Morgan, if we just talk about concussions, which scientists believe repetitive concussions may lead to CTE, and it may be the amount of concussions or the force of them, it's not just football. We look at boxing, we look at lacrosse, soccer, MMA, even certain jobs or service in the military, which can all contribute to this. So it's important that parents look at any sports that may increase concussion risks and look to make sure that the teams are using proper gear, there's concussion protocol, and that kids are not participating in these in these contact sports until they're age appropriate. Because if you start getting head concussions earlier, that increases your risk of getting them more so over time and for a potential cumulative effect. Always great advice. Dr. Alok Patel, thank you so much for weighing in on this important topic.